same again. The people took them to be drunken men and women. All we know that women were there on that day. They were not only men. Amen. The vote Jews. Women were there. They were drunken in the spirit. Praise God. We look forward for another Pentecost in our time. Another Pentecost. Lord, send another Pentecost, Lord. Lord, send us another Pentecost. We are men and women will be drunken in spirit. And they will be mistaken for drunken men. It shall happen in our time in the name of Jesus. And I put a seal on that prayer led by our pastor. Any grave cloth, any covering after resurrection that will not allow you to see what you should see. That will not allow you to be seen for marriage. That will not allow you to be seen for elevation. According to Isaiah 25 verse 7 that says, On this mountain, even this mountain, shall the veil and the covering cast upon the people be destroyed. Let it be destroyed in the name of Jesus. As our Lord Jesus Christ issued that command and said, Loose him, let him go. Any covering cloth of the grave, it doesn't matter how thick that grave, that cloth is. We say, be loose in the name of Jesus. Be loose in the name of Jesus. Now go into your marriage. Go into fruitfulness. Go into promotion. Go into enlightenment. Go into your next level. Go into success. Go into prosperity. Go into every space that your life desires. In the mighty name of Jesus. It is settled. In Jesus' name we are praying. Lord, we ask that you will speak to us now and let your word bless us. Let your word instruct us unto righteousness. Let your word edify us. Let our hearts be open to receive your word. Make our hearts fertile to receive your word. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Please be seated. God bless you. Amen. Glory be to God. I said, glory be to God. The vigil was an awesome time. And God did terrific things. And God is still at work. Thank God for that follow-up prayers to what the Lord did at the vigil. And terrific things will begin to happen in your lives. In the name of Jesus. Tribulations shall be turned to testimonies. In the name of Jesus. Terrific things, I mean terrific things. Things that ears that hear will tingle in the mighty name of Jesus. That's why I play with us every meeting. Don't, uh, don't treat every meeting lightly. You don't know when the Lord wants to meet with you. Praise God. This morning for our live transformation service, the Lord is speaking to us on the theme, possessing through kindness. Possessing how? Through kindness. Possessing through kindness. Possessing through kindness. And therefore we sang, we took a hymn that says, bringing in the sheep, sowing in the morning, sowing seeds of kindness. Seeds of kindness. The Lord will have us possess through kindness. You know, the Lord has said this year, he's turning our tribulations to testimonies and he's giving us platforms that he's going to move. And one is also kindness. He wants you to possess through kindness because the way he's going to move is unpredictable. Praise God. I've seen how that the kindness that somebody showed to another person became the person's uh, uh, leeway later in life. Praise God. 
the same person, this person saw a young person who was intelligent, but the parents were poor. And he took it upon himself, said, ah, you can't be out of school. And then he took it upon himself to sponsor the person to university level and to the College of Medicine. And this person graduated a medical doctor. Long story cut short, later in life, the sponsor, this person that showed kindness, the grandchild, not his own child, his, the grandchild took ill and was being taken here and there, here and there. Praise God. They couldn't handle it. Only to be referred that the only person, the only known surgeon that can handle this case lives here. Lo and behold, when they traveled to that state, it was the same man that the grandfather had sp sponsored to study what? Medicine. And um, he operated. He, they didn't know initially. They didn't know initially. So the doctor did all that he did as a medical doctor, professional. It was when uh, the child was going to be discharged and the grandfather also came to visit and that they looked and it was like you and all that. And they both broke down in tears. If he had not sent him to school, there wouldn't have been anybody to handle the grandchild. There wouldn't have been anybody to handle the grandchild. Amen. That's why it says, sowing in the morning, sowing seeds of kindness, sowing in the noontime, and the dewy eaves, waiting for the harvest and the time of reaping, we shall surely come rejoicing, bringing the sheaves. Praise God. Possessing through what? Through kindness. Exodus 2, 16 to 22 is our text. Exodus 2, 16 to 22. We'll read it at the right time. So what is kindness? Since God is saying we're going to possess through kindness. Dictionary says, is the quality of being friendly, generous, and considerate. The quality of being friendly, generous, and considerate. And that dictionary says, it, is, it says kindness is a type of behavior. So it's a behavior. It says it's a type of behavior marked by acts of generosity, consideration, or concern for others. A kind of behavior that is marked by acts of generosity. What again? What again? Consideration or concern for others. And it didn't end there. It says, without expecting praise or reward. That is, when you do this generosity, this consideration and concern for others, you are not express, expecting praise or what reward. You are doing it not in the expression of thank you, not in the expression of coming to say, what do you, what do, you, what do I give you back? So it is done in the, unconditionally. Praise the name of the Lord. And we have other words in the Bible that just oppose for kindness. We have goodwill. We have warmth. We have tenderness. We have selflessness and benevolence. There are other words that can be used for what? For kindness. Praise God. Beloved, kindness involves the willingness to celebrate and give attention to someone else. Did you get that? Opposite of what we're looking at at the school of the world. It says kindness is what? The willingness to celebrate and give attention to someone else. Someone else. You want to celebrate that person. You want to give that person attention. The opposite of envy and jealousy. Praise God. It says it is about giving honest feedback when doing so is helpful to that person. Did you get that? Kindness is about what? Giving honest feedback. When doing so is helpful to the others. You see somebody's child misbehaving in the neighborhood. When the child sees that the parents are away, the child gets involved with some vices. I said, well, <laughs> the parents are away. 
They don't know what the children are doing. One day they will know. Ah, that's wickedness. Praise God. But kindness will make you give honest, honest to not lies, honest feedback to someone else when doing so is helpful. In those days, parents were general. I used to share with my wife, my children, you know, the way I grew up. I've told you how I grew up. I wasn't born with silver spoon like some people were privileged. Praise God. We were born, amen, we were born into struggling families. Our neighbors where we have, uh, house where we have very many neighbors. I told you I grew up in uh, where now? Face me, I face God. Praise God. Where you have very many neighbors who will report you because every neighbor was your parent. Every neighbor was what? Yes. And whatever they said, your parent did not query. And so we had them taking charge for other men's children. That was good, you know. Not what we have now. That it is mind your business. Nobody cares if the other person's child is going wayward, is doing evil, is dying. That wasn't our culture. Mind your business is not what? African culture. Amen. It's borrowed culture. I read of a case where somebody died. They got to know the person died the following year abroad. Even the male person who pressed, did not see the person come out with, the males had, had packed. A year plus was when they got to know that the person was gone. Somebody just came was, and then forced the place open and called the police. The person has rotten abroad. I said, this can never happen in Africa. Amen. Because we cared for our neighbors. At least you will greet, you will say hello. And if you don't see that neighbor for, you want to, you know, raise an inquiry. Praise the name of the Lord. So it is giving honest feedback. I went into that because one of our neighbors will always give feedback to my dad whenever he came back from work of what I did and what I did not do. <laughs> Praise God. So it's honest feedback, not because once that woman sent me on errand and I did not go, he was going to cook up lies to tell my dad. And my dad, who would not ask, would rather believe, because in those days we were told that um, elderly people don't tell lies, right? And it's not true. Some of them tell lies. <laughs> Praise God. If I said, no, say, eh, are you saying I'm telling lies? <laughs> Praise God. And the woman would lie against me. And my dad would beat me. And out of that, when my dad had gone, the woman would do like this to him. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> and I will abuse her. Then she would tell my dad again that I abused her. That's another round of beating. Praise the name of the Lord. So kindness is giving what? Honest feedback, not false feedback. When it is helpful to do so. Many people have helped some other people's children from being destroyed because they gave honest feedback to their parents. That that's your child. Hmm. He's not going to school, though. Once you depart, he goes to another place. When you are coming back, he will wear the uniform and come. And the parents were able to check that before it became worse. Kindness includes, you know, acting and speaking in a compassionate way or in compassionate ways. Kindness includes what? Acting and speaking in compassionate ways ways. What's the theme again? Possessing through what? Kindness. Beloved, we are commanded of God to be kind. We are commanded of God to be what? To be kind. That is to show kindness. To show kindness from what I have defined. God commands that we should do that. Give honest reports. Don't say, what's my business? It will not come. Don't say, if he likes. Praise God. To so show benevolence, to show kindness, to consider others without expecting what praise or reward, to help where it is necessary, where you can, without expecting of what reward or praise. So God commanded that we should what we should be kind. Ephesians four verse thirty two. Ephesians four verse thirty two. It says, "And be what kind one to another." Tender-hearted, forgiving what one another. We are commanded to be what 
to be kind, to be kind-hearted. Amen. Kind one to another, to show kindness. God commands us as believers to be kind. Why is God asking us to do this? The first is because kindness is an attribute of God. Kindness is what? An attribute of God. It's an attribute of God. If you are looking at who God is, one of the things you must know that God is, is that God is what? Kind. Let me look at your neighbor. Check your neighbor. Say, God is kind. God is kind. Say, neighbor. God is, God is kind. And if you are of God, you've got to be kind. Thank you. Luke chapter 6, verse 35. Luke chapter 6, verse 35. It says, but love ye your friends. Oh, it's enemies. Thank you. Love ye your enemies. And do good and lend, hoping for nothing again, not expecting reward. And your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of whom? The highest. Who is that highest? God. For he is kind unto what? The unthankful. And unto who? Amen. Remember the earlier part, he said, do good and lend. Those are acts of kindness. Hoping for nothing again. You are not expecting reward. You are not expecting thank you. You are not expecting the person to reciprocate. Though it is good. But kindness is, is doing this act without any expression of praise or reciprocation. Praise God. It says, for your reward shall be great and ye shall be the children of the highest, children of God, for he is kind unto two sets of people. Most times we show kindness to those who show kindness to us. We show kindness to those who love us. But if you have to be the children of the highest, children of our Father in heaven, if you have to be a true Christian, a genuine Christian, a proper born again, then it is what? It says, he shows kindness unto what? Number one is what? The unthankful. Those who don't even bother to say thank you. Those who will not be there to thank you. Those who don't have the capacity to do, to say thank you. And to the who? who? To the what? Read it now. To the evil. Who are the evil? The wicked. The sinners. Amen. Are we talking? Is this from the Bible? Our God, the highest, he shows kindness to both the unthankful and to the evil. And if we must say we are his children, we must show kindness both to the unthankful and to who? To the evil. Amen. That's why at times when you ask God to stone the evil, he doesn't stone them. Praise God. Praise God. At a point, Jesus Christ was going with disciples and some people said some things on the way. And James and John, they said, Master, shall we call fire to consume these people? <laughs> but they know they could call fire. They say, ah, you don't know the type of spirit that you have. If you call fire, you will burn everybody on the earth. Because very many people are wicked, are evil. Then you will have burnt everybody. Praise God. Kindness is showing, I mean, godliness, being like God, being children of God, being children of our Father in heaven is showing kindness both to the unthankful and to the evil, which means kindness is unconditional. Showing kindness as believers is what? Unconditional. It's not with any condition attached. You should not show kindness to only the people that you know. In fact, to evil, evil people. Ah, that's why we need grace. And to the unthankful. You say, I, I even did this yesterday, I did it last week. Not even a common thank you. Is that not how we talk? I won't do it again. I will go and do it to other people. Because common thank you, he couldn't say. Uh-uh. He is ungrateful. Praise God. But kindness does not wait for thank you. Does not wait for, ah, I have to paste it on Facebook. 
that this person has shown me so, may, so much what? Gratitude. So much uh, good. Praise God. Why is God also commanding that we should be kind? Because kindness has the capacity to enhance our possession. Kindness has what? The capacity to enhance our possession. That's why it says possessing through want, kindness. Here we've been liberated. Here we have resurrected. And it's time to possess. The veil is taken away. But kindness has the capacity of making you to possess. To possess that marriage that you have longed for. To possess that child that you have been waiting for. To possess that job that you have been waiting for. To possess that breakthrough, that admission. Kindness. Kindness has what? The capacity to help you possess. Let's look at just one case study in the Bible. Very many uh, illustrations in the Bible. But let's look at just one. How many? Just one. And that's our text. Exodus 2, 16 to 22. Exodus 2, the example of Moses. How he possessed through what? Through kindness. Exodus 2 from verse 16. It says, now the priest of where? Of Midian had seven daughters. And they came and drew water and filled the troughs to trust to water. To water their father's what? Father's floor. And the shepherds came and drove them away. These ones were they kind? These ones were cruel. But Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. An act of what? Kindness. He didn't know them from Adam. He didn't know them from Adam. He saw that some people were trying to oppress them. And he stood up as a person against seven. I mean, against the people that uh, we don't know the, num the numbers. You know, he stood up against those shepherds that came to, I mean, that were molesting those daughters and fought for them. And what did he do? He came, drove those people away and stood up and helped them and watered their flock. He didn't just drive those people that were crawling away. He helped them to fetch water and help them with their flock. These are girls. Let's help them. Praise God. He didn't know where they came from. He didn't know their capacity. They didn't beg him. They didn't ask for it. He rose up and did what? And helped. That's an example of what? Kindness. Kindness. Amen. Moses exhibited kindness. And let's see how it helped him to possess. Okay, from verse 18 now. Are you with me? It says, and when they came, they are, he has done what he wanted to do, and the ladies were what? They were gone. We don't even know if they said thank you. He did his own. As God will have him do it. He says, and when they came to Ruel, their father, he said, how is it that he have come so soon today? In fact, the way Moses did it was such that it gave those girls speed. And they said, an Egyptian, because he was draped in Egyptian attire in those days. An Egyptian delivered us out of the land, of the, out of the hands of the what? The shepherds. And also drew water enough for us. Did you take, care of, take note of that? Not only did he deliver them, he also helped them. He said, these are ladies. He helped them to draw water from the well. Because they were doing what ordinarily men should be doing. But the man had only daughters. So he had no choice. The daughters had to do the work of men. Praise God. So he delivered us out of the hands of the shepherd and also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. You see how kindness is? It wasn't half job done. Well done. It was well done. And he didn't charge them. He didn't say, who is your father? Where did you come from? What do you have for me? Because this current generation, there is nothing free. They help you to push vehicle, they're asking for money. They direct you to an address. They are still asking for anything. Nothing is free again. No act of kindness again. And consciously, the church is also getting involved. Nothing free. We don't even want to serve God for anything again. Everything monetized. Monetized. As you stop and you are asking for address, they are looking at you and they are waiting for you to give them something for showing, guiding you for address. 
they have to charge you for the illustration. Praise God. <laughs> but that was not Moses. Praise God. Verse 20. And he said unto his daughters, And where is he? This man that has shown you this guy, where is he? Where is he? Where is it that ye have left the man? This one is for another day. Call him that he may eat bread. And Moses was content to dwell with the man. And he gave Moses Zipporah, his what? His daughter. And she bare him what? A son. And he called his name Geshem. For he said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. Praise ye the Lord. Kindness. Possessing through what? Through kindness. Possessing through what? Through kindness. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Possessing through kindness. Through a gesture of kindness, a lot of transformation happened to what? To Moses. Amen. You need that to read earlier to know what brought Moses to this place. Moses ran for dear life because for what he did in Egypt, he was declared what? Wanted. So he became a fugitive and he got to that place. Ordinarily, Moses should have been what? Ichi. He should have been, um, what can you say now? He should not have been the right uh, condition of heart. He should have been cruel because he had no place. And when he showed kindness, when he saw this people. He didn't because of his own predicament, homeless, wanted. He didn't become cruel. He didn't uh, join with the league of the shepherd to oppress the ladies. He didn't take advantage of the ladies. Rather, he showed them what? Kindness. And he didn't ask them, this kind of have shown you, you know I don't have a house. Uh, does your father, do you have a house? Can I come home? Is there a place? No. Not at all. Freely, without expecting thank you, without expecting any what uh, reciprocation. Praise God. Even when he was what? Stranded. What did this act of kindness, what did it fetch for Moses? Remember, the first thing we were told that is that what? They gave him what? Food. They gave him food. Before he got wife, he, was, he first of all ate. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. In verse 20, latter part, said they call him that he may eat bread. He has been away. No food. Hungry. I did because of the fact that he was hungry. He was not cruel. He didn't pull him back from being kind. Our challenges should not be cloud our heart of kindness. We should not say because we are challenged. I am praying. I am fasting. You know, you don't can't understand you know what I've been battling with. No. Our challenge should not be cloud our heart of kindness. It should not cover our eyes for us to know who we are in Christ. That we are sons and daughters of the highest. We must not forget it. Whatever challenge we have should not close our heart of benevolence. It should not make us not to consider others. It should not make us cruel. Because inherent in kindness is possessing your possession. Inherent in kindness is possessing that marriage you've been waiting for. Inherent in kindness is possessing that job that you have been praying for. I recall another case now. That happened not far from where I was living. The man, he was driving and um, his car got, just stopped. New car. Maybe God was the one that did it. And he came out, obviously it was a man that uh, had a driver, but that day he was driving himself. He did not know what to touch. He just opened the window and was looking. And an applicant was just going, was just going, just bouncing like that. He saw the man. And he said, ah. he greeted the man. Said, Sorry, sir. Is there anything I can do for you? You know, I said, I don't know. This car just stopped. It just messed me up. He said, go inside, sir. Go inside, sir. He said he just used his hand. He was touching. He himself knew nothing. He said he put his hand on uh, the battery, this thing, he did, he, said, he did not know what he touched. He told the man to kick. The, the vehicle responded. And the man said, what did you touch? He said, he does not know. He said, anyway, take my card. 
That was how he got a job. He got a job around Bagada. Act of what? Kindness. He could look at the man and abuse the man. And go away and look at him unperturbed. Praise God. Inherent in the act of kindness is your possession. So, from the case of Moses, from his act of kindness, he what? He possessed food, as you said. He secured food. Not only food, he secured what? Accommodation. They said, be content to dwell with us. If you don't mind, stay with us. Will you have minded? He had no place. Say, ah, if you say so, I'm at home. The man looked at him again. This must be a good man. And to have delivered all my daughters, he will be a good son-in-law. Say, if you don't mind. This my daughter is so, 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 so available. He said, I don't mind. Praise God. So from an act of kindness, he got food. He got accommodation. He got wife. He got the father-in-law. And there he gave birth. Praise God. He even got job because the man now made him to begin to take care of his um, heads. Praise God. If you read Exodus 3 verse 1, he became, he was now watching over. We read that while he was watching over the flock of his father-in-law. He got job. Amen. And not only that, that place became a platform for training Moses for ministry. Because for 40 years, he was there. God began to train him for ministry in that place. And from that place, he got, he leapfrogged to his next level in ministry. He was there till God called him. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. From one act of kindness. Tell somebody, say, I will be kind. Say, I will be kind. Act of kindness. Very many of us, we have closed the door against our testimonies by not being kind, by looking away from others, by not showing concern, not knowing that that, that you looked away from was the door to enter into your breakthrough. You saw the door like this, you looked away. You saw the door like you looked away. I'm unconcerned. Somebody else will do it. I'm in a hurry. And you didn't know that we had to just open the door and enter. If Moses had looked away, if Moses had looked away, that is how it has happened to very many of us. I've been frank with us. You've prayed for your spouse and God has heard and he has created the door. And it's for you to show that act of kindness. And it's going to, from that act, it will link you with your spouse to be and your failure to be like a child of the highest robbed you of that opportunity and that opportunity was gone and it's going to wait for God to, after you have cried he will have to create another cycle and it's going to take another a time a cycle can be a year, can be two, can be three praise the name of the Lord act of what? kindness act of kindness out of kindness. Praise God. Because God uses basis. When I was going to get married, it was one of the platforms God used to link me up with my wife. Apart from speaking to me, you know, um, I've shared with some of us in those days, we, it happened that we now were working in the same place and she asked that I give her a ride home. Drop her and continue from the link of my colleague. I tried to say no, not for not being, wanting to be kind, but for being shy in those days of the opposite sex. I didn't want to carry a lady. Amen. Then I was still very shy. But every excuse I gave did not work because God was involved. Praise God. And from giving her a right, dropping her, we got talking. And then later, like I've shared with us, the Lord began to speak and to nudge. Assuming I blocked her totally. And that was like my second chance, like I told you. The initial time God led me to her, spoke, gave vision, gave other things, I, did, I couldn't connect. And years went. And when I prayed for mercy, God created another platform again. I was going to miss it, except for God's mercy. Who said... Um, 
this person you go home with, when I have told them that, you know, that you go with the leaders, this person you are giving the right. But how do you know she's not your wife? And I, like I shared with us, that was the message the Holy Spirit was ringing inside of me as I was going home. Because I never looked at that side. But now praying, I now had to pray and the Lord moved me forward. Act of what? Kindness. So very many of us, God had answered our prayers and for us to possess requires one act of kindness and the other. Look at the Shunammite woman. She had prayed to God and she had forgotten. She felt, well, maybe God has refused to answer. Let me go ahead. But she kept on with her act of what? Hospitality, which is a branch of kindness. And that was what brought to her her long expected child. Act of what? Kindness. Praise God. So for Moses, an act of kindness brought about a 360 degree what? Change. From being homeless, from being a fugitive. That was why he called his son what? Geshem. Amen. Amen. Where he said what? He has been a stranger in a strange land. God had made him to possess. Even in a strange land, the Lord will make you to possess in Jesus' name. He will make you to possess in Jesus' name. So, brethren, what a great loss we suffer at times when we refuse to show kindness. When we refuse to show kindness. Beloved, God has to touch our hearts. Because this dispensation, the hearts of believers have become very hard. For two things. For the current situation in our environment. Our environment, our environment has become very hostile and challenging, right? Insecurity, you can't trust people. And then for uh, some orientation in the body of Christ, particularly concerning enemies. Praise God. You don't even want to consider any enemy. Every enemy must what? Die. Must die. Amen. The ones that must die are spiritual enemies, not physical enemies. Praise God. I've told you, it's the powers, it's the principalities. Since we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood. Says God shows kindness both to what? The unthankful and the evil. Evil, wicked, cruel. How many of us will show kindness to our cruel neighbor? That neighbor that saw that you spread your clothes, you know, and went and moved them away. That neighbor that saw that this is where you park and then go and put some things there. Will you still show kindness to that neighbor? That neighbor that puts a stumbling block so I can fall. Will you still show kindness to that neighbor? Do you know that by doing that, you may be possessing what you have been waiting for? The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved, kindness at times can be misconceived. At times, kindness can be misconceived as being naive or being foolish. When you are showing kindness, some people think that um, you don't have sense. Like I've been, I've been tagged that before. That was once in my life or in our lives. I was married then. Things were very tough. To feed was a challenge. Right? And then somebody came and assisted us with funds. And when the person heard that we accommodated some people, we accommodated a couple, we also accommodated another brother. So we had three people that were living with us and living on us, so to speak. So we had to provide food. And the person heard and said, ah, we are trying to support you. You are still supporting, you are backing others. Somebody that, is, that they want to back is backing others. So they cannot understand that as long as you are, your leg is not balanced, why should you carry somebody else? But kindness is unconditional. And may I tell you that through those people that we accommodated, the Lord linked us up to a source of solution. One of them just said, Pastor, I don't know if you mind. There's this place I, I go to pray. If you don't mind, follow me. And I followed. And I got there, the Lord said, follow that man. That was the man that the Lord used to bring us out of our predicaments. So if I had not accommodated, accommodated him, I wouldn't have been linked with the man of God that God was going to use for me. And through that man of God, he guided me. I got out of the trouble. Assuming 
I did not accommodate him. I assuming I told him off. I said, look, things are tough. Amen. Moses did not say that, look, even me, I'm a fugitive. I can't help you girls. You know, to your tent, O Israel. No. So it can be, if you are showing kindness, they can think you are foolish. They can think you are, you, are, you are naive. But it's not the case. Kindness could also be abused. You know, because some can take advantage of people. Is that true? They can take advantage of your being kindness, or being kind. It is possible. But should that stop you from being kind? No. Look at what the Lord told us in Ephesians 4.32. Where he says, he said, be ye kind one to another. Ephesians 4.32. He said, tender hearted, forgiving one another. God knows that some people will ride on our kindness to take advantage of us, to cheat on us. He knows. But God is saying, forgive them. Forgive those acts. Amen. He knows. And he has added that word, we should forgive. Beyond that, he said, be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted. Tender-hearted, that is, having a large heart. Being able to accommodate anyone. Being able to accommodate those who will step on your toes because you are kind. Being able to accommodate those who will take advantage of you because you are kind. Being able to accommodate those who will abuse you because you are kind. Being able to accommodate those who will cheat you because you are kind. So be tender-hearted. And what? And forgiving. Praise God. So, beloved, kindness is a great virtue. And being kind, from what we have seen, requires what? Courage and strength. Being kind requires what? Courage and strength. So we're going to pray for courage and strength today. Because to be kind requires. I can tell you very many testimonies. How kindness have linked up people to their next level. I've seen somebody that, by being kind, met the spouse. By being kind, got jobs. By being kind, received help out of the current predicament. And the Lord has told me before how that some of the people I was laboring on, by their refusal to be kind, they were just closing doors against themselves. They were just closing doors. Praise the name of the Lord. That's why Matthew 5, 7 says, Blessed are what? The merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. When you are kind, you will obtain kindness. Kindness is a seed. From where we, 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 we have sinned, and from the song we sang, sowing seeds of kindness, you will surely come back rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. It may take 10 years. It may take 20 years. But you surely come back. You will bring in what? The sheaves. So, irrespective of the challenges of our society, the risk, you say, ah, pastor, to be show kindness is very risky. If I give somebody a ride, what about if the guy is a, is, is a, is a fraud, is a kidnapper? Amen. Does, should that stop us from being kind? Matthew 5, 16 says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good work. It's part of good work. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. So, we should show kindness irrespective of what may be happening around us. Kindness is unconditional. Praise God. It's unconditional. It's unconditional. And how do we show kindness? What are the various acts of kindness? Of course, you know how to be kind. Acts 28 verse 2. Acts 28 verse 2. It says, and what? And the barbarous people showed us what? No little kindness. Apostle Paul was talking. They were at the risk. They just, they were to perish on the sea. The Lord intervened and their ship stopped at one island. And they were very cold. They have been on sea, you know, turbulence. They've gone through turbulence for many days and weeks. When God eventually landed them on that island, as they came down, people that did not know them from Adam, what did they do? See, and the barbarous people showed us what? No little kindness. For what? They kindled a fire and received us, everyone, because of the present rain and because of what? Because of the cold. Act of kindness has to do with the situation of the person. They were, they saw that these people were just from the sea and that was cold. So what should they do? They lit fire for them. They tried to get them what? Warmth. Whatever act of kindness that you need to show will be revealed to you by the situation of the people. Acts of kindness. 
You see somebody wearing the same clothes every time, every time. I know that it's a uniform. Praise God. Act of kindness, you can afford it. Buy clothes. We've had it happen in the church. Some people will buy and give to the pastorate to give. Some will put it, uh, we've seen it happen before. They'll put it um, on nylon bag and all that, you know. And while the people are standing praying, they will drop it on their seat. As they're about sitting down, they will talk, they jump up again. Hey, what am I sitting on? And when they open it, they see clothes there. Later, they will come and meet pastor. Say, pastor, I saw, when I was about sitting down, I saw this, and they put my name on it. And I said, an angel, drop it. Go and be thanking God. But not angel from God, human angel, who showed what? Kindness. So you look at the situation of the people, look at what they need, look at what help they require, and give it, and offer it. That is kindness. You see a child that is struggling with his education, and you can help. You have the time. Why don't you take that child and offer to teach that child for free? Instead of saying, dollar, dollar. And say, among that person, those children, this child, we don't know. The head must be, a, the brain must be what? Must be stone. Must be a nut. Why don't you offer help? Why don't you offer help? Give somebody a ride. Let somebody have shelter over his head. Bring somebody under your roof. It's not too much. It's not too much. You have that room, and a brother, a sister is squatting, struggling to have Abba, and you can afford it. Bring him under your roof. You have enough to eat, and you are throwing away leftovers every now and again, and God is looking at you, and some other person is struggling to be able to eat, and you are throwing away leftovers. Why don't you offer kindness? Why don't you move shift part of your excess to somebody else. Why don't you come with bags? Bag of rice, bag of this and give to the needy. God in heaven, he will bless you for it. He will connect you to your own helper in the mighty name of Jesus. So clothe naked. As is the aged, this generation is very wonderful. We began to take to a foreign culture. There's no culture that is anti-God. You see an aged person struggling, carrying something. And instead of you to help give a happy hand, you move so that the person does not fall on you. Praise God. I see, I shake my head. I go out at times, I see young people. You want to enter a lift in a jar. They struggle with you. There is no more respect, no regard for old age. It's terrible. In those days, we will stand for the elders. You will see another person you don't know from Adam. You will carry the disciples upon your head. Help that person. Help the person to the next place. Help the person out. You are on your vehicle is free. See somebody in the rain. See somebody going down that road. You can't, you can't stop and say, oh, where are you going? Can I help you down the, down the road? And a long street. You don't know. You may be carrying an angel. You don't know. That person you are riding, you are giving a ride, may link you to that thing you have been crying to God for for very, very many years. And your failure to do it, you miss the opportunity. I pray you will not miss the opportunity. In the mighty name of Jesus. Possess, beloved, through kindness. Second Peter 1, 7 to 10. Second Peter 1, 7 to 10 says, And to godliness, add what? He said, And to godliness, brotherly what? Kindness. You should add brotherly kindness. Show kindness even to those in the house of faith. Amen. Verse 8 says, For if these things be in you, that is kindness and those other virtues, and abound, that is, they are part of you, they make you that ye shall neither what? Be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. When you do it, it makes God happy. God will begin to reveal things to you, secrets. God will be happy with you. Amen. Verse 9 says, But he that lacketh these things, you lack blindness, and you lack kindness, and others. He says you are what? The person is blind. And cannot see afar off because you are only looking at the now. You don't know what that kindness can lead you to. Ah, many testimonies are coming, but for time. Kindness is a seed. You cannot be kind and regret. Even if somebody took advantage of you, God will sit in heaven and He will repay you. Amen. He said that person is blind and cannot see afar off. Go to verse 10. Say, We are for the rather brethren. Give diligence to make your calling 
an election sure. For if ye do these things, including showing kindness, ye shall never fail. It confirms that you are a child of God. It confirms that you know God. It confirms that you are a minister of God. You say you are a minister of God, you are a pastor, you are a reverend, you are an apostle of anything. And you cannot show little kindness. No. It's what approves of us as children of God. Kindness. Kindness. And because of kindness, we have taken very many people in. Amen. As a bachelor, before I got married, I had 11 people living with me. How many people? 11. I was living in a three-bedroom flat at Mafoluku. 11 people, including um, two that are my siblings. Those, two, those nine extra, they came as friends and brethren from the church. 11 people. Praise God. The friend, friend, and the friend of my, uh, my junior ones. And when I was going to get married, because from what we have taught, it must be to your tent, O Israel. We must start our marriage life right. You know, it became, I had to begin to find a way of settling them one after the other. Amen. Kindness. And you know what? Our daughter had to go and serve. And God had prepared a family, a home for her. <laughs> Where she went to serve. One seed of kindness gives back to another. You know, I can give you very many testimonies how the Lord has rewarded and paid back. Praise God. The Lord just worked it out. And we appreciate the family. They said, look, don't appreciate us. This is what we also do. So it's an opportunity for us to, uh, to appreciate God. Praise God. Praise God. So that's why it says we must do everything to make our calling and election word sure. Make it sure. You say, but pastor, I want to do it, but I'm afraid. If you are afraid of showing a case of kindness, what do you do? You pray. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Say, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own word, understanding in all your ways, including act of showing kindness. Acknowledge him. That is, Lord, I want to show kindness. I want to do this. Lord, what do you say? Pray about it. If there's a restraint, if it's the enemy who wants to take advantage of you, God will give you a nudging. God will not allow it to prosper because he, God, who has asked you to show kindness, he won't watch you being destroyed. Amen. So we pray about it. Because for lack of being kind, we have shut doors for our possession. The Lord will help us to be kind in Jesus' name. Let's make up our mind because a lot of possessions to be made in this season through the act of kindness. Rise up and talk to God. Say, Lord, I will be kind. Lord, give me the strength. Give me the courage to be kind. Talk to God. Give me the strength and courage to be kind. Give me strength and courage to be kind. Give me strength and courage to be kind. Give me strength and courage to be kind. Lord, kindness is of you. I want to be like you, my heavenly father. Help me to be kind. Let not situations, let not circumstances, let not bad previous experiences cheat on me by making me to be cruel and not to be kind. Lord, help me. Help me to show acts of kindness that I may possess my possession. Yes, the devil may hear. I want to take advantage of you, but God is greater than the devil. God will always be there to put the enemy to shame. You may need to take a risk. Remember, it's unconditional. You are not waiting for thank you. You are not waiting for them to compensate you. Lord, help me to be kind. So in the morning, so in sins of kindness, so in the known time and the winds waiting for the harvest and the time of reaping we shall show rejoicing bringing in the sheep bringing in the sheep Lord bringing in the sheep we shall show Shall come rejoicing, bringing in the 
by one again. So in the morning, so in seeds of kindness, so in the thank you Lord for your word Lord we ask for your mercy and forgiveness where we have turned our eyes away from acts of kindness where we have shut the doors against help either for fear for lack of understanding you have said those who do so they are blind and they can't see far but Lord we acknowledge our shortcoming today we ask that you have mercy and forgive in the name of Jesus. We are for fear of the uh, vices in the society. Lord, we have pulled back. Forgive us. We have seen that we have no choice, O God. Therefore, I pray for myself and for everyone who has had the grace, the strength, and courage to show kindness. Give to everyone in the name of Jesus. That we may be applauded and we may, may confirm us as the sons of the highest. Lord, help us to be kind. Amen. And Lord, that the next opportunity for our possession that you present through kindness, Lord, we will not miss it. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen.